Hi everyone, here is the video that I was talking about in uh, the last video, well, the last couple of videos probably. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to my project cars. First, we can go over kind of the long-term project here. Then we'll go over the project that's currently being worked on. So, uh, this car I have had for approximately... Uh, wow. Uh, I want to say six years. Uh, I bought it from South Carolina, drove it all the way back here to Michigan. Um, by the way, if you want to see what Michigan looks like right now, uh, here we are. So good times. Uh, <laughs> um, it was sock K8, dual cam K8. Uh, it was actually black. Uh, and it went through as soon as i got it back i had another car that i had my track day performance angle kit on that car was in the process of being vq35 swapped hey i brought these out here so i could actually use them um <laughs> uh so what i did was i swapped my tdp angle kit on it and i drove it like that uh it had some xxr wheels uh, I had J2 engineering coilovers, which I got off eBay for like 700 bucks. Uh, they were not great at all, but I loved it. Uh, I love S chassis. I love driving them. This was actually my 12th S chassis, and this is my 13th. So I've had a few. <laughs> Should have kept like my second one and just like kept building it, but you know, I was young and dumb. So, uh, yeah, so... I took it to No Star Bash, if you can see. I think this was 2014. Um, and I was that dumb kid from a very, you know, from the time I first got my S chassis, I would street drift it all the time. Um, and, you know, I did uh, my first real S chassis I got from uh, Las Vegas, actually. Drove it back here home, had Tyne Super Drifts on it, uh, welded diff, and that was it. Other than that, it was just stock as a rock. Oh, it had gutted interior. <laughs> um, and man, that was in 2008, I think, 2009, something like that. And I just street drift that everywhere. You know, like every corner I could, just rip the e-brake, slide it around second gear. I mean, I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have a lot of experience driving. I did some basic stuff to that, you know, like, uh, well, I had to re-weld the diff because it broke. And then I did like angle spacers and tension rods and a tension rod brace and strut tower bars and sway bar bushings. And, you know, uh, and I had an SR20 powered car shortly after that. I, well, I traded that black hatch for a coupe, still a KA car. Had that, drove that around for a while. Traded that car for an SR20 powered coupe. And that's where I really got the turbo itch, of course. It it had a T28 on it and like 14 pounds. And I just thought that thing was a ripper, you know. Um, lost my license in that car because uh, I just did too much reckless shit. So, <laughs> um Yes, ended up selling that car, uh, and I've just been through several since then. I mean, it's not worth going over all the different ones I've had. White hatches, mostly hatches. I prefer hatches myself. I also love coupes, but I'm a big S13 man. Uh, I've had one S14. Um, it was basically just a shell, um, and I like them. Obviously, they still like drive the same, but I prefer the S13 aesthetic. Um, I would really like to someday get a coupe and make it a Sylvia and that whole ball of wax. But regardless, uh, back to this car. Um, I drove it at No Star Bash. It was a blast. It only made like 136 horsepower at the wheels. <laughs> uh, and, you know, just like it was like third gear was like really pushing it for that car. And so I... Yeah, drove it at that event. It was a two-day event. Went through only one set of tires, not even. And then the KA started making funny noises. Um, 
And that was the second KA I put in it because I blew up the first one snow drifting like an idiot. So, <laughs> um, I was like, whatever, I'm going to yank this thing out. Um, I had to sell my other shell that was VQ swap, like in the process of being VQ swapped. And, uh, yeah, yanked the KA out of it, sold it, um, and then started down the road of VG swapping it. So originally I was going to put a dual overhead cam VG in it, just naturally aspirated, drive it like that. Um, but of course the VG that I bought, the intake, the heads had soft intake valves and they were bad. So I had to pull that thing apart. And then I was going to VG 33E swap it, which is out of an Xterra or a Quest or a uh, Mercury Villager. Um, but they also, they have really tough bottom end so they can handle like 400 torque stock internals. And I was working at Wayland Speed at that time and uh, I was going to turbocharge it and like it was going to be a super gnarly setup. Um, but I just spent a bunch of money and never got it. That's at the same time I bought like the Wise Fab and the Driftworks front knuckles and the whole ball of wax. So uh, this car has been around the block. Uh, I gutted it. I was going to cage it. This is definitely the car that's eventually going to be like full on like pretty much like race car through and through. I don't really care if it ever sees the street again, uh, which it probably will. But uh, yeah, so I tubbed the front tubs. You can see here's still my mock-up VG in here. This is the only one that I have still. I sold all the rest of them <laughs> because it just spiraled out of control and wasn't what I wanted it to be anymore. So um yeah uh i'll show you the interior here um yeah cut out the hump i mean it's completely gutted you can see i started the cage i plated the towers and i actually have a main hoop that i don't like in here but uh i have decided that uh cage work is not for me and <laughs> So I will be having someone do the cage in this car because I am too particular about my cage work to do it myself. It just is, is frustrating. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much this car. I mean, it's fully seam welded. Um, obviously I swapped the subframe into this car. So you saw all the subframe stuff that I did wrong and that kind of stuff. Um, originally I tried to modify the front subframe for this and move the rack forward and that also is a project that I, probably with the wise fab kit it's probably good but like i tried to do it like myself and i don't know it turned out okay but definitely not something that i really enjoy so that leads me to this car right um so of course i my this thing has been down for like three years or four years now um, and I just really missed driving an S chassis and I have a Mazda six that I drive around, uh, and it's just boring, you know? I mean, there's nothing like a light rear wheel drive car. Just uh, that's straight up uh, specifically an S chassis because I just love the way they drive. But, um, oh, also I sold the TDP angle kit. They don't make them anymore. They're beautiful. All billet lower control arms, billet knuckles, 90 millimeters of roll center correction, adjustable Ackerman. I mean, the thing was amazing. But at that time, I decided that I didn't really need like that level of. I mean, it was like a perfect like if I was going to if you were going to go into professional drifting, like you could use that kit. You know, it's like wise fab, but just billet um, <clears throat> with some different tweaks and more roll, roll center correction and that kind of stuff. But. Uh, yeah, I decided I didn't need that, so I sold that as well. Um, but yeah, this car, um, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it w had an SR20 in it. Uh, the guy said that it had some issues, but that it was overall, like, solid. It was said it was a built engine, uh, and he didn't know too much about it because he had a shop do it, um... And I noticed they had some oil leaks and stuff. And so I was like, I can, you know, like 
let's do it. I'm, I'm tired of driving turd cars and if I can get this thing and just fix it up a bit, you know, fix some leaks and stuff and drive it around, like I'll be stoked, you know, and I already had the fuel suspension and stuff. So I was like, I can just do kind of do what I did last time, swap it all over and have a ripper, you know? Um, well, unbeknownst to me, the car definitely had more issues than I thought it did. I actually rented a U-Haul and a trailer, went out there, drove it, pick it up, drove it back to my house, yanked the head off of it, um, and the thing was just janky. I mean, the head was all scuffed up. Uh, the head gasket was pinched in the front cover. Like, I don't even know how you do that, but uh, it was messed up. Um, had some signs of detonation on number four. Uh, had an ISR T28 on it, uh, manifold, a Tome manifold that was all cracked, uh, you know, because they didn't do the exhaust right, and just like a bunch of knockoff, knockoff HKS blow off valve on it that leaked, and you know, some eBay intercooler, and actually, there's a nice downpipe that I'll be reusing with the setup I'm doing now, but uh, so it kind of spiraled out of control, um. I had the block machined, but the detonation, and I actually bought like new Wiseco pistons with it, Wiseco boost line rods. Like, I was like, we're just going to redo this thing and like, whatever, it'll be good. Well, actually, the block had too much detonation and was like wearing away the fourth cylinder. So it needed to be sleeved. So I was like, either I can sleeve this thing or I can try and find a new block. I ended up finding a finding a 2.3 stroker short block um and the dude had it listed for sale for 1800 bucks and i was like uh that's like only a little more than just leaving my own block so let's go check it out checked it out picked it up uh it had some kind of funny wear on the cylinders but i was like whatever i'll just get a hone and whatever so snagged that pull tore it down turns out pissing the wall was too big on that um but actually what i'm going to be doing it actually has carilla rods je pistons you'll see i'm going to do a video of me building the engine so uh <clears throat> the piss in the wall is actually too big but i'm actually going to get the pistons coated to take up that space and then i'm going to send it because <laughs> i've already bought all this stuff for this car and it needs to be driven so uh yeah i'll take you through this thing um i resprayed the bay uh obviously i got strut tire bar gk tech brake master cylinder brace um i actually bought a team hanging loose front cross member for it which actually allows you to re remove the rack forward 40 millimeters um so that thing is pretty rad i'm pretty excited to try that thing out uh, I have a GK Tech high angle sway bar in it. This is my own custom fabricated uh, tension rod brace. The bottoms are boxed too. Uh, I have a stack of parts over here for it. Uh, most of my day was actually cleaning my garage because it was just so embarrassing. But um, so this is a Future Fab exhaust manifold bottom mount T2. Highly recommend. Awesome, awesome fabrication this dude does. This is a Borg Warner EFR 6258, uh, which obviously was originally intended to be on a 2 liter, but now will be on a 2.3 liter. So things are going to make torque like a V8. <laughs> um, these are Garage Star fender braces. Uh, I was obviously going to run a stock manifold until I got that guy. Uh, these are the uh, Diff Tech Premium or whatever their top of the line turbo lines are. Engine air filter ID 1100s, uh, wideband AM inline 340 or 400 liter per hour fuel pump. <laughs> I can't remember. It's the inline one. I'm going to stick in the tank. It actually, this is going to go in the tank. This is a Holly Hydra mat. So I don't have to worry about fuel starvation anymore. That'll be an interesting project. Stay tuned for that one. Mishimoto um, red hoses, vibrant performance muffler here. Gonna go with the big guy, kind of like the stealthy, like more low key look. Uh, Koyo N Flow rad. Uh, let's see, here is my spare subframe. This will be the one that's getting prepped 
for uh, all the good stuff. And uh, I have this giant Earl's oil cooler that I'll be running on it with a thermostat so that obviously I'm not cooling the oil too much. Um, let's see. Uh, my part shelves are embarrassing. I have a race quip, six point harnesses, driver and passenger. Uh, this is my Borg Warner turbo speed sensor. So I'll have turbo speed. Uh, Canton oil pan. It has the diamond shaped baffles in it. Uh, I believe this is the best oil pan for SR20s. We will see on the track because I can dead log oil pressure. Um, KRC power steering reservoir. I painted these intercooler pipes black. They're obviously all dirty now, but um, I got to clean up this intake manifold. I will be running E throttle, as I said in my other video. So the throttle body uh, displays. This is uh, the cooler for the power steering. Uh, it's a Cetrab. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a Treadstone 1235 intercooler. Uh, it's a big bar and plate guy super effective you can never really have too big of an intercooler until it makes your car overheat so i'm going to be ducting this i don't think it'll be an issue still working on my valve cover uh i did the uh valve cover mod where you put an and fitting in here uh, i have to actually reinstall the baffles in this as well but uh i'm going to be doing that there's my oil filter relocation kit <laughs> Um, let's see here. I have a McLeod Racing 350Z clutch here. Okay, it's slow wrapped up, but uh, I have a 350Z flywheel here from the uh, it's actually from a Clutch Masters white bunny kit, and you can see it's very rusty now, so I'll have to sand the crap out of that, but um. Yeah, it just allows you to have a little more a little more torque capacity for the clutch that you're running. So it's like the it's like the clutch material that's like in between centered iron and like organic. So uh, Braille 21 pound battery will be located right about here. Um, I've got the ultra racing C pillar brace, trans tunnel brace, which that thing is a little goofy. And strut tire bar. The strut tire bars are super great. Uh, I highly recommend the strut tire bars. The rest of them, mm, they could probably be a little better. But got an energy harness bar in there for my six points. Uh, it'll be getting my pro car racing seat and my Nardi 340 millimeter silver stitched wheel. Uh, you can see the brackets down there. Uh, I still have to install those. So it's uh it's pretty set up. I mean, it's kind of like an ultimate streetcar build, uh, especially with the two three liter. I mean, it's gonna make a ton of torque. Uh, I will be running the stock transmission for now. Um, wheels, uh, the front wheels are these Motegi MR one thirty fives that they don't make anymore, and I'm sad because I like these wheels, but uh, they have Zestino. Greg 07Rs, 235, uh, 45.17, I believe, 235, 40.17. Uh, on the fronts, on the backs, I'll probably be running just kind of drift spares um, until I get another set of like nicer wheels. I, I think I'm going to get a set of uh, square G33s. I kind of like those that style, so... We shall see. Um, I have a diff here. This has a Cos two way in it. Uh, so I'll be running stock axles for now. Stock transmission that I cleaned up. Um, that's a four G six four block that was going to go in a two G DSM that I sold. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is definitely priority obviously right now again like i said it's kind of an ultimate street car build 2.3 super fast pulling turbo it's going to make a ton of torque tuned on that link fury ecu flex fuel so i'll be able to run ed5 uh the transmission obviously is going to be the weak link so i might have to do something about that eventually but i'm i'm probably going to keep it on pretty low power just to uh do as many events as I possibly can, driving on the street as much as I possibly can, because 
I just really miss driving an S chassis and I want to have a ton of fun in this thing. So, uh, this car you probably won't see much of um, besides it being next here next to the other car um, <laughs> because it's definitely like a long-term project. I'm really not decided yet what engine is going to go in this thing. I'd like to do something with six cylinders. I'm really not sure. I don't really like the idea of a big heavy inline six iron block thing in the front, but I don't know. We shall see. Um, I would. I love six cylinder sound though. So, but yeah, this thing is going to be SR twenty built bottom end. Uh, I have a radium fuel rail as well that I didn't show you. Um, so it should it should make really really good torque. Uh, if I push it, it'll probably be able to make over four hundred horsepower. Uh, I do have stock cams right now though, so that might be required or an intake manifold down the road uh we shall see maybe end up doing a ve head i don't know it's crazy sky's the limit right uh, <laughs> but uh yeah oh uh one of the other things that i'm very proud of is uh this is one of the last three drft front bumper s chassis front bumpers imported into north america uh i know it's a crappy view it came in this giant c west box um but that is going on the race car for sure because i don't want to mess that thing up oh yeah i have origin lab uh 55 millimeter overs for the front of this thing because obviously i will be running a ton of angle uh oh i did um if you can see here i, I undercoated the whole wheel well uh, I did have to smash on this thing after I did all this. So the engine paint's a little messed up. You can see the sway bar. Um, so yeah, I mean, this thing should be set up to just take to the track and rip. Um, that's kind of the goal. Just be super reliable, shred tires, go home, you know, drive it around. So yeah, uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Oh, I have like tucked brake lines as well, like braided brake lines. New clutch line for it, obviously. I mean, pretty much this whole thing's being gone through. You know, it's it's actually really crazy. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my S chassis. Um, I love I love the S chassis, and I'm so stoked to get this thing up and running so this thing is like priority number one in my life right now uh so there should be plenty more of this content on the channel as well as the wiring stuff uh next video is going to be me dissecting the oem harness because it's unfortunately not as simple as just building an engine harness for the link ecu and running it out to the engine i could do it that way but then obviously the gauges don't work the chassis connections don't work you know that kind of stuff so i have to take that stuff into account i kind of gotta dissect the oem chassis or the only oem engine harness so that i can figure out what connections i still need to make on the chassis harness here in the engine bay uh so that's the next video is me dissecting that figuring that out and then finishing up the planning for the motorsports harness and then you know depending on when my pistons get back from being coated i'm gonna do the sr20 build video which there will definitely be some tips and tricks in that that you probably have never seen before on how to build an actually reliable sr20 uh, that's not gonna spin the rod bearings at the track um shouldn't blow rocker arms off uh, it should be a pretty killer setup. So stay tuned for those. Um, obviously, when that all stuff gets done, I'll be, you know, showing all the stuff, putting this thing together, getting the EFR on it, tuning it on the dyno um, at Wayland Speed. And uh, yeah, just lots of, lots of cool content coming up. So I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope this was enjoyable for you to watch, and uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. See ya.